Hello and welcome to Bay College's online lectures for college algebra. I'm Jim Helmer and in this video we're going to look at section 6.5 which is the properties of logarithms. Now in previous uh, videos we looked at some of the properties of logarithms but we're going to explore them a little bit more in depthly. Uh, one thing we want to keep in mind is our logarithms are the inverse operations of exponents. If we know our rules of exponents inside and out our rules of logarithms, which we'll see in this section, are actually the same rules. We're just looking at them from the opposite direction, the inverse operation. Now, if we look at this, we've seen this in a previous, uh, in the previous video, section 6.4. We have log base a of a. Well, a logarithm again asks us, a to what power is a to the y? Well, since logarithms are exponential values, a to the y is a to the y. Essentially, we can look at it this way. If these are the same base, it's going to reduce to 1. a to the first is a, so y equals y. a to the y equals a to the y. If the bases are the same, the powers are the same. Logarithms tell us what a power is. Now, if we look at this example here, we have log base b of the square root of b cubed. Well, one thing we need to do is realize that this radical is just a fractional exponent. Since we're dealing with logarithms and exponents, we should know interchangeably between the two. Essentially, we're saying, let me just rewrite this, log base b of b to the third power to the 1 half power. Well, that would be to the 3 halves power. If we recall this when we talked about radical exponents, fractional exponents, it's the same thing. Now that we've rewritten it using our rules of exponents, we can see, oh, it fits this case scenario. When the bases are the same, it simplifies to the power. Logarithms tell me what the power is. b to the 2 thirds is b to the 2 thirds, which is the same thing as b cubed, the square root of that quantity. All right. Well. Let's look at it from another perspective. Well, what if I have a base of 4 and I'm raising it to a logarithm? Well, we have an exponent in the form of a logarithm. This whole thing tells me a power. Well, in the same perspective, if the bases are the same, then it simplifies to the powers. This is a power. We're asking, what is that power? Well, we can do it one of two ways. Let's start here, because we know our rules of uh, order of operation. We work to the innermost value in parentheses, but we deal with exponents next. Well, there's no parentheses here. Let's deal with this exponent. Well, this logarithm is an exponent, so let's deal with it. I know that 16 is 4 squared. Here we have log base 4 of 4 squared. The bases are the same, so this is going to tell me the power is 2. So now it says 4 squared. Well, let me rewrite that. 4 squared, well, we know that's 16. There is a shortcut here, and it's essentially using this same concept. If the bases are the same, well, it doesn't matter if this is part of the logarithm or if the logarithm is in the power position here, as it is in this one. The bases are the same. We can think of this as reducing to 1. 4 to what power is 4 to what power? Well, 4 to the first is 4 to the first. It reduces to 1, and I get 16. Essentially, we can think of them as canceling, but they actually reduce to 1. Now, is that exactly what we got here when we went the long route about it? Sure enough, we got 16. I could have just said, this cancels to give me 16. It reduces to 1. Now, if we think about that concept, that's what we're dealing with here. This is going to simplify to x. When the bases are the same, it simplifies to 1. 1x one is x. All right, and finally, we can apply that to here. Well, what do we notice about ln? What is ln? Well, we should be able to identify that to be a base e logarithm. Here we have e, which is that irrational number, raised to a log of the same base. That simplifies, and the value is x cubed. So a little shortcut that we can apply one of our properties of logarithms. All right, let's look at some other properties of logarithms that we should be familiar with because we know our rules of exponents. Well, the first thing we're going to look at is let's review those rules of exponents. If I have two quantities with the same base 
and I'm multiplying them, that's why it's called our product rule, I can add the powers. So a to the m plus n. Well, how does this apply to its inverse operation of logarithms? Well, when I saw a product, I knew I could add the exponents. Well, logarithms are exponents. So when I have a product of their argument, I can use the product rule of logarithms, which means I can break this up to some log of m plus log of n. Now, let's see. I had addition of the powers. Since logarithms are powers, I can add the two values, break it up into two logs. Let's look at this example here. Here I have log base 2 of 8 times 64. Well, let's break that up into something more manageable. Log base 2 of 8 plus, because of the product rule, log base 2 of 64. And now maybe I could simplify it. Well, I know 2 to the third is 8, so this value tells me the power is 8. 8 is 2 to the third. So 2 to what power? 3. Here, well, maybe I don't recognize that this is a perfect power of 2, but I can say, you know what? This is 8 times 8. So if I split it up to log base 2 of 8 plus log base 2 of 8, I can simplify that to 3 and 3. So essentially, this log of this large number here, log base 2 of 8 times 64, is actually 3 plus 3 plus 3 if I can break it down using my product rule and I find out that it's 9. All right, let's look at our next rule of exponents called our quotient rule. Whenever I have division of values with the same base, I can subtract their powers. a to the m minus n. Well, let's clean that up a bit, n. m minus n. So if I see a logarithm with division, I can use the quotient rule of logarithms which just means I can split up this argument to two separate logs. Log of m minus log of n. Now, I just want to draw your attention to this. If we recall this rule, our quotient rule of exponents, it's always the top minus the bottom. Don't make any sign errors there. Well, that applies to this as well. It's always the top argument minus the bottom argument, the log of m minus the log of n. Now, the next, oh, let's, let's actually do an example. Here we have ln of a over b as our argument. I can rewrite this as two separate logs with base e. That's what I recognize ln to be, the top minus ln of the bottom. Split it up into two separate logs. Maybe this would be something that I could simplify if I knew what a and b were. a and b just represent numbers greater than 0 because we can never take the log of a negative. Don't forget that. That's one of our properties. Let's look at this. This is called the power rule of exponents. Very useful rule. If we think about this, we have a base to some power raised to a power. Well, here, when we had the product we added, well, here we have the power of a power, a power raised to a power. This is where we multiply it, because I have n of everything in these parentheses. So a to the m times n. Should write that a little bit bigger so you can see it on the camera. m times n. We can multiply them. That's our power rule. When we have a power raised to a power, we can multiply them. Well, if we think about this here, log base a of m, we have a power rule for logarithms as well. And it's the same as our exponents. If I have an argument to a power, I can multiply it times that power. Well, guess what? Log base a of m is a power. I have a power raised to a power. So I can essentially multiply p times log base a of m. Log base a of m. So let's see how that applies to something like this. We have the natural log of the square root of a. Well, the square root, I'm just going to do a little simplifying, is ln of a to the 1 half power. I have a power raised to a power. The argument is being raised to a power. I can use the power rule of logarithms and just multiply them. 1 half times ln of a. 1 half ln of a. So I can simplify it to that. And maybe I know a is some factor of e, or maybe I could throw this into my calculator, because my calculator does do natural logs, and then take half of that value, half of ln of that quantity. All right, let's uh, 
take a look at an application of this where we can maybe simplify something. We're going to be asked to write something as the sum or difference or multiples of logs, which we just saw using those previous properties. Here I have the log of the quantity 5a over 4b squared. Well, let's use our rules of logarithms. The first thing I'm going to do is I identify that division. Let's split it up. I can write it as the log of 5a. And I notice the base is 10 because no base is being denoted. I have to assume base 10. Minus, because it's division, log base 10 of 4b squared. Now I can split it up even further. Because this is still a product. I have log of 5a minus log of 4 times b squared. So I could split this up further. And I'll bring it over here. Log of 5 plus, because it's a product. And when we have the product, we add them. That's our product rule. Minus, and I'm going to use parentheses here, log of 4 plus log of b squared. Now, that minus I just left out front because it's minus whatever I do to this. And because I see multiplication here, 4 times b squared, I wrote it as the sum of logs. Now, I can distribute that negative, or I can work within these parentheses, kind of order of operations. I see this log raised to a power. That is my power rule. Essentially, I can take this 2 and multiply it by the log of b. One way to think about it is just pull that power out front, multiply it 2 times that value. And then I will distribute this negative only after I've done that. So log of 5 plus log of a minus log of 4 minus 2 log of b. Now I could stop right there and say, OK, it is now the sum and differences of logs. I could have done it a little bit differently if I recognized this to be a perfect squared term. Well, I could have brought 2 out front and had 2b in here. So this would be 2 times that quantity. Well, 4 squared is, or excuse me, 2 squared is 4. So that's another way to do it. But this will be just fine for the concept. We still saw the application of the power rule in that example. Now, what if I'm asked to combine several logarithms into a single logarithm using the sum or difference or uh, powers? So we can use these rules. And I say, well, innermost parentheses first. Let's deal with this. Well, let me just rewrite what I'm not going to work with. ln of x minus ln of y. They have the same base. And I see subtraction of these logs. That is the quotient rule. I can undo this subtraction by writing it as ln of the first over the second. It's always the top minus the bottom. So the x goes on top, and the y goes on the bottom. And now I say, hey, this is being multiplied. Well, I can undo the power rule and bring this value in as the power of the argument. So I'd have ln of x, y cubed. And now, because it's addition, I can combine some terms. But before I do that, maybe I want to distribute this 3, because it's x over y times itself 3 times x cubed over y cubed. So let me just bring it over here and rewrite it. ln of 2x plus ln of x cubed y cubed. And now, one last step here. I still have addition of these logs. They're both of base e, so I can combine them. This value times that value, the product rule. So ln of 2x times x cubed is 2x to the fourth over y cubed. So essentially, what we did is we took something that was broken down as the sum or difference of multiples of logs and wrote it as a single logarithm. That's the inverse of what we did here. We had the log of an argument that we were able to split up to the sum and difference and multiples of logs. All right, one last concept that we're going to explore, or one of two last concepts that we're going to explore in this video, is the change of base formula. 
Many of our calculators, whether they just be scientific or graphing, some of them can only do natural logs and common logs. And if we recall, our common log is LOG, no base is denoted, that's base 10, or LN, if we just see those two letters, we know the base is E. Our calculators, if the, you know, they're scientific or graphing, will always be able to do this depending on the type of calculator you have. So let's think about this. If x equals log base b of m, I could rewrite that as an exponential equation, b to the x equals m. Well, interesting enough, if we have log base b of m, the change of base says that log base a of m over log base a of b, our m and our b here, this ratio will always be equal to the original uh, argument here, log base b of m. We can split it up into log of something else, some other base, a new base, a in this case, of m over log base a of b. One thing I tell students is if you're going to use the change of base, recall what goes in the bottom and what goes on the top. Kind of just draw a dash through there. Our base goes in the basement of our fraction, log of whatever we want it to be, a new ratio. The, B, the base has to be in the bottom, and the argument on top, A, B. So what does that mean? If this A, as long as this ratio is consistent with the original uh, problem here, we can change it to anything. Well, if our calculators can do base 10 or base E, we can switch it to that, and that's why it's called change of base. We, we can change the base to anything we want. So log base B of M, I can write as log base 10 of m over log base b, or log base 10 of b, or I could write it as natural log of m over natural log of b. I prefer to use natural log, especially when I'm writing it on the board. That's one less letter to write, and you know, human nature, I'm a little lazy. I want to choose that one, one less letter, right? So let's see how we can apply change of base using our calculators. Let me just pull this board in here. Now let's say you're working with a scientific calculator that doesn't have base 5, or it doesn't have a function that can do anything except log base 10 or natural log, our LN. Well, what I can do is I can rewrite this. And I'm just going to put a little dashed line through here. My base, and I'm going to use natural log, goes in the bottom of that fraction. And the top is this. When I draw that line through, I see this number's above, this number's below. I can write ln of 89 divided by ln of 5. Now, if I'm using a calculator that can't do base 5, I can simply go parenthesis ln of 89, close your parenthesis, hit that division key, parenthesis ln of 5, close your parenthesis. And now, I can plug this into my calculator and find the value. So if you're following along in the notes at home and you have your calculator, Go ahead and plug this in and see ln of 5 or ln base 5 of 89. You can actually find its value in a calculator, even if your calculator cannot do base 5. What if we want to graph a logarithmic equation where we have a base of 3? We can use the same concept of change of base. So let's say we want to graph this, but my calculator doesn't have a base 3 function. Well, I can go to my calculator and I can re write this using the change of base formula. Let's say I go log base 10 of x over log base 10 of 3. That is something my calculator can do. It can do base 10. So maybe in my calculator, maybe I wanted to use natural log. I could parenthesis ln of x, the top, divided by parenthesis ln of my base 3 on the bottom, and maybe I want to graph that. And now I can plug that into my calculator. I can hit graph, and it'll pull up the graph for me. So we can do it to find a quantity. We can also do it to find the infinite solutions. ln of x divided by ln of 3, something I could put in my calculator, hit the graph key, and actually see the, x, or the logarithmic function. So here's a quiz for you. Here we have f of x equals log base 2 of x. I'd like you to graph that, display your graph, make sure your window's appropriately placed on your graphing calculator. 
f of x equals log base 2 of x. Then I want you to evaluate it. Now, you don't have to do it using your graphing function. You can do it algebraically using change of base. Find the value or the function's value at x equal to 7. So find f of 7. Tell me what that quantity is, log base 2 of 7. Essentially evaluate the function. Use change of base. Find that value. Make sure you know how to use your calculator. This has been section 6.5, Properties of Logarithms. Thank you for watching.